I'm going to react to a true crime documentary, The Murder of Dan Markle. I have 17 years of law enforcement experience and eight of those years as a criminal investigator. Daniel Eric Markle, who went by Dan, was born in Toronto, Canada on October 9, 1972. After high school, Dan attended Harvard before studying abroad at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. After returning to the U.S., he enrolled at Emmanuel College in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he obtained his master's degree and then earned his law degree from Harvard Law School. After that, he began practicing law in Florida and quickly became a well-known, respected attorney. He worked as a law clerk for a federal judge and then as an associate at a law firm before finally joining the faculty at the Florida State University School of Law in Tallahassee in 2005. A year earlier, in 2004, while on the Jewish dating app, JDate, he met Wendy Adelson, a University of Miami Law School student. Wendy was born in Florida on April 22, 1979, to parents Donna and Harvey. She also had two siblings, Charles and Robert. Her father, Harvey, was a cosmetic dentist who founded the Adelson Institute for Aesthetic and Implant Dentistry, where her mother, Donna, and brother Charles also worked. Wendy would then graduate from the University of Miami Law School in 2006. After Dan was hired on at the Florida State University Law School, Wendy was also offered a contract teaching position. The two dated for a couple of years and then married in February of 2006. However, the issues with their marriage began at the wedding. Dan was very committed to his Jewish religion and wanted his wedding to be strictly kosher. However, even though Wendy and her parents assured him the catered food would be kosher, in the end, it wasn't, and that devastated Dan. This began the divide. Okay, it. she said that's when the problem started at their wedding. That's, that's not a good sign at all. I'm, yeah, and I know nothing about this case. Uh, nothing whatsoever. I'm watching it with you for the first time. ...between him and his in-laws. After getting married, they settled back in Tallahassee, but Wendy wasn't happy with this and allegedly wanted more than anything to be back in Miami. Three years after Dan and Wendy married, they had their first son in 2009 and then their second son in 2010. During this time, Dan kept a very busy lifestyle, which Wendy felt kept her from pursuing her own career goals. Years later, she even confessed in a podcast that she did for a writing class that she didn't feel like Dan viewed her as an equal. She even said, I thought I could cheat the system and marry a man I lacked passionate love for. She then began working on a novel called This Is Our Story, which had a character who had fallen out of love. To those who knew her, it felt more like an autobiography, and when Dan failed to read the book, it devastated her. In 2012, Dan traveled to New York City, where he told a friend that Wendy had become distant and depressed, and he felt like his marriage was slowly unraveling. Before he left on the trip, Wendy had decided she had had enough of living in Tallahassee and put a plan into motion. While Dan was gone, she packed up everything, including the furniture and her two sons, and moved back to Miami. When Dan returned from New York City, he was shocked to find only his bed and divorce papers. For the next six weeks, Wendy, with the help from her mother Donna and brother Charles, hid out, refusing to tell Dan where his kids were. By July 2013, their divorce was finalized. Wendy then filed a motion to relocate the kids to Miami, while Dan filed an order to forbid her from doing that. By the end of 2013, he had won the order, but it wasn't over yet. The court had yet to decide on the parenting arrangements, finances, and the distribution of assets. In the meanwhile, Dan filed a motion with the courts asking him for constant supervision while his children were with Donna because of the negative comments she was making about Dan. During a Skype call with his children, one of his sons told him that Donna had called him stupid. Donna then became obsessed with finding a way to overturn the court's decision and get her grandchildren closer to her. One of her crazy ideas was to convert the children to Christianity, thinking Dan would disown his children if they weren't Jewish. The custody battle had basically turned very bitter, and in mid-2014, everything came to a head. On July 18th... You know, this happens. I, I, I've been divorced oh, 10 years now, and I have, I have two children. Um, one thing you, you can't do, and divorce is horrible, but 
you've got to leave the kids out of it. Don't don't you you don't need to be saying negative things about the uh, the spouse in front of the kids. That that's I guess that's making you feel better, but I mean that, that's just my my personal opinion. 10th, 2014 at 11 a.m., Dan was sitting in his black Honda Accord in his garage on the phone with a friend when someone approached him. The person on the phone then heard a loud bang and tried calling out for Dan, but there was no response. Neighbors also heard the noise, looked out the window, and saw a car speeding away. After that, they called 911, telling the operator that Dan's car window was busted out and he had blood all over his head. Sadly, he had been shot at point-blank range and would die the following day at the hospital. They notified Dan's parents and also brought Wendy in for questioning, where they informed her of the shooting. Here's the video of her reaction. Daniel, all right, has been taken to the hospital. Um, he's not going to survive. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this investigator just threw the inform information out there, and you can see he's not saying a word. He's watching her, watching see how she's reacting. Is she acting appropriately? Look, look at his face. He's watching her really hard right now. Well, before we get into everything, I have to establish where you were and who you were with and so forth. Okay. okay? And then once we've established all that, I can give you more details. Okay. Do you understand why I wanted you to come here before I discuss this? Oh, my God. Okay. There again, you notice he's not saying a word. He's letting her cry. He's not saying it's okay. He's not saying anything. He's waiting to see if she's going to blurt something out. He, he's just waiting. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, you have nothing to be sorry about. I just don't understand. I get this really Can you let me let me get over this hump, okay? Can we do that first? Alright. Can you tell me what time you left your house this morning? Yeah, it was there. Um I didn't leave this morning, I didn't leave until noon. Okay. And oh my god. And I tried to drive up Trescott and I saw that it was blocked. Uh, it was blocked at some point. I, I'm not sure what time it was blocked. I just, just thought, oh, there's maybe some trees down or something. Sometimes oh, you're saying as you drove down which one of the side roads? When I, I'm going to a friend's party tonight, and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, um, oh my God, what am I even talking about? I needed to buy, it's a stock the, stock the shelf engagement party, and so I went to buy bourbon. Okay. So I went to drive from my place. <laughs> Up Trescott to get to ABC Liquor, and it was blocked. So I just turned around. I was on the phone at the time. I wasn't paying a lot of attention, um, and I, so I just turned around and drove up the other way. I just thought, oh, sometimes there's when I lived there, there were electrical things okay. that would happen. During the interrogation, she began going through different people who could have possibly shot Dan. Family, I actually just talked to my brother this morning. My my parents are in Coral Springs. Okay. Um, and my brother, I have two brothers, but I'm very close to one of them who is in um, in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. All right. So everybody's, that's where you're from originally, I take it? Yeah. Okay. All right. His family's in Canada. Did they know? Did you tell them? No, they haven't been notified oh yet. Oh, my God. His parents are going to be devastated. <laughs> okay. 
this is what I want to do, okay? I'm, I'm, this is what happened, okay? Daniel's been shot, okay? And we have to find out why and who did this. Can you help with that? I will try. Okay. What I, what I want to do right now to try to expedite things, okay? But I need your permission is I want to take your cell phone and download all the information out of it. Sure. Do you have, do you have a problem with that? No. Okay. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. I got to get a form for you to sign and then I'm going to get the phone started. Okay. Oh my God. I have a lot of friends. I know. How do you know that? Well, you had two of them up there for a last minute lunch date, right? Last minute. Well, I, I mean, they, you, you went up there, you're sitting with them. You have friends. I do. What I meant by it is that Danny didn't treat me very well. And okay. I'm so scared that maybe someone did this. Not because they hate Danny, but because they thought this was good somehow. Oh, are you saying that you think maybe one of your friends would have done something like this? Do this? I don't know. That's why I'm that's why you're here and that's why we're talking. Would you ever ask someone to do something like this? Not in a million years. Okay. Do you in my opinion, she's being mainly truthful. Now, we may find out that she had it done. I, I don't know. I haven't seen this. But the signs and things in, in my years of investigations and doing interviews like this, I feel like she's being about 90% truth. I feel like she may know something but may not be involved. Do you think someone would do this for your benefit without asking you? No. What good does it serve? <laughs> I mean... My brother, um, the one his name's Charlie, the one I'm really close to, he makes a lot of jokes in bad taste, and it was a joke he made. He bought the TV for me this morning that got broken, and I was talking to him about whether it made sense to pay to fix it or whether I should get a new one, and it was always his joke that, like, he knew Danny treated me badly, and it was always his joke. He said, I, I, you know, I looked into hiring a hitman, and it was cheaper to get you this TV, so instead I got you this TV. Oh, we're definitely going to be talking, I think, was his name Charlie? Her brother? We're definitely going to be talking to him, just even though she took it as a joke. We're definitely talking to him in this investigation. Um, I mean, he would never... <laughs> He's my big brother, and he's been taking care of me since I was little, but he would never. And I, I said, I told that to the repair guy this morning. Right. That's okay. I said, he asked me how much it cost, and I said I didn't know because it was a gift, because my brother said it was cheaper than a hitman. It was my divorce present. Okay. Such a horrible thing to say. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> But even my family, who felt like I had been mistreated, would never do something like this. Never. I'm going to come sit over here on this side again, if you don't mind. Okay, wait a minute. Why did she bring up her family? Why did she say even my family would never do anything like this, even knowing how badly he treated me? Um, something you'll have to look into also. Uh, the meat you want to be sick. I'm usually a lot more fun. Okay. The idea that I would ever do anything is like I understand. I understand why they need to check, but and I don't know. I don't know who would though. I don't know who would do this. I can see why they would think it would be me. Well, I, I, I don't think. I did investigate. I saw him talk to you at all about like what your role is in this. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. And, and a lot of times they do stuff just to kind of cancel you out, too. At one point, she mentions her boyfriend, Jeffrey Lacasse. What was the, how, okay, how long have you been seeing Jeff? Since the, the end of September. Okay, all right. And so since September, you all have been seeing each other exclusively? Um, in the fall, I was dating someone else, too. And the relationship really evolved around February. Um, you know, I post-divorce, I was kind of slow to, like, um, but so I jokingly used to call him my special man friend and around February, 
he started being more like my boyfriend and he started spending some time with the kids and um, they really adore him. And I introduced him as mommy's friend, not as mommy's boyfriend. So, Okay, I, I noticed the time down there on the bottom. I don't know how long of a period this has been when they started the investigation saying that he was dead. She is much more calm now, much more relaxed. Um, I don't know, that's just interesting. She, she doesn't appear to be upset at this point. They just think of him as Jeffrey, and he plays Star Wars with them, and um, he didn't like Danny because Danny hurt me. So I see why he's a good suspect. It's like, what if it's Jeff? Like, then I did this by asking for some time away from him. I made him crazy. When Jeffrey comes in for his interview, he talks about his hate for Dan and what he did to Wendy. He also talks about how charismatic Wendy is and how he was so in love with her that he would throw himself in front of a bus for her. I was in love with this girl, man, so it's hard. And she really has this charisma, this sexuality, and so, you know, you throw yourself in front of a bus for this girl. And you've never had any kind of physical contact with Danny? No. I was surprised you guys didn't call me earlier, though, because I probably said a hundred times in public that I like to kick his ass because he kept, like, really making Wendy suffer and things like that. Right. But no, I would never. I'm a professor and I'm a However, they were in the middle of breaking up, and Jeffrey had a solid alibi, as he was in Atlanta at the time of the murder. However, in a shocking twist, Jeffrey tells the detective who he suspects murdered Dan. I have something I want to tell you, but I want it off there. I want to be concerned about my safety with what I'm going to tell you. Danny Markell just got killed, and I don't want to be next. I'm sorry if that sounds paranoid, but uh, I do have some ideas. The family desperately wants her back in South Florida. Mother, father, and she has a brother. If I could just say, I would be investigating Charlie Adelson. No, I don't know if he did this. But if you're looking at somebody, don't miss him. This guy's body language, uh, I feel like he's being honest and truthful. Uh, I don't see anything right now of deception. The whole family is real weird. Something's up with this family. They hate Danny in a way I've never seen this kind of obsession. Like their hobby is hating Danny. <laughs> Even family friends were interviewed and couldn't believe what the Adelsons had done to Dan during the divorce proceedings. They hated Danny, really. They hated they, Danny. I think they were mean. I think they, I mean, to do some of the stuff that they did during this divorce with Danny is just not reasonable. My parents have more reason to dislike Danny than almost anyone else. He hurt their daughter. They're very angry with him. But even my family, who felt like I had been mistreated, would never do something like this. Never. When investigators began looking at footage from places Dan had been on the day of the murder, they noticed that a Toyota Prius began following Dan as he was leaving the gym. They eventually traced that Prius back to a rental company in Miami and found the renters' names, Luis Rivera and Sigfrido Garcia. However, they initially couldn't find a link between those men and Dan. Regardless, Garcia was arrested for the murder and Rivera was already behind bars after being arrested during a raid on the Latin Kings that he was the leader of. When investigators began looking at the suspect's acquaintances, they came across the mother of Sigfrido Garcia's children, Katie Magbano. They found that Garcia had been in constant contact with her on the day of the murder. They then decided to pull her bank records and noticed that her deposits spiked after Dan's murder. Those deposits were traced right back to the Adelson's dentistry clinic and were signed by none other than Wendy's mom, Donna. As invest Okay, now it's taking a different direction um it's sounding more like a murder for hire at this point um i don't know l l let's see investigators continued digging they discovered a pretty damning photo of katie hanging out on a beach with wendy they also discovered that katie had dated charles between 2012 and 2015 but what did charles have to do with all of this Still trying to make a solid connection, they remembered a comment that Wendy had made during her original interview on the day Dan was murdered. Be badly, and it was always this joke. He said, "I, I, you know, I looked into hiring a hitman, and it was cheaper to get you this TV. So instead, I got you this TV." While Wendy told detectives it was just a joke, her ex-boyfriend Jeffrey told a completely different story. She told me that Charlie had looked into having Danny killed in summer of 2013. 
She meant it dead serious. Not like I joke around, I like to kill Dan Marker, I'm sick of it. That's different. She said it in a dead serious, chilling, uncomfortable kind of way. In the moment, I was like, my stomach flipped. I was like, whoa. At this point, Donna and Charles were at the top of the suspect list and even went as far as to wiretap their phones in an attempt to catch them off guard. Oh, they said they wiretapped their phones. That is a very, very hard thing to get done. I've worked two cases where we had to do that. It literally took a month to be able to get that. An undercover FBI agent walk up to Donna on the street and hand her a newspaper article about Dan's murder with a number on it. Mrs. Adelson? The bearded man is an undercover agent wearing a body camera. Oh, Listen. You. <laughs> you okay, so the FBI is involved now on this, and they normally do get involved with murder for hire type cases. No, don't be scared. He's posing as the brother of Luis Rivera. And I want to let you know that my brother, he helped your family with this problem you guys had up north. He's going through some rough times, and we want to make sure that you take care of, the, of what he's going through. Well, this will explain it. Thank you. She has the paper. They're walking away. After making her take the piece of paper, he walked away. She then calls the number on the paper, and the undercover FBI agent tells her they need $5,000 extra dollars for the hit, to which she replies, I'll have to call you back. After hanging up, she called Charles, and they began speaking very cryptically about the paper she was handed. If they were innocent in the whole situation, why would they need to talk in such a cryptic way? After hanging up with him, he called Katie and told her to figure out who was demanding the money. Clearly smarter than the Adelsons, she tells him it's most likely the FBI, but he doesn't believe her. However, throughout all their cryptic conversations, never once did anyone confess to being a part of Dan's murder. Toward the end of 2016, Louis Rivera, who knew he was facing the death penalty, took a plea deal and turned state witness. He told investigators that Sigfrido... Okay, this happens all the time. All the time. One gets arrested, they tell on everybody else. It happens a lot. Garcia was hired through Katie by a lady who wanted full custody of her two kids. He offered Rivera $35,000 to assist in the hit. He said that after the hit, Garcia called Katie and let her know the hit was done. Katie was then arrested and also charged with first-degree murder. Katie and Garcia were then tried together in October 2019. During the trial, Wendy was brought in to testify and confirm that she knew Katie. Then her former boyfriend, Jeffrey, was brought in and told the court that Charles had said he looked into all options to take care of the problem referring to Dan. When Rivera was put on the stand, he was asked who hired Garcia to do the hit, and he said the Adelson family threw Katie. He also says that he was paid his portion with stacks of $100 bills, and the stacks were stapled together. When Charles's ex-girlfriend, June, took the stand, she dropped a bombshell. Are you aware of a large safe that's there in the residence? There is a safe. Okay, and during the time that you were dating him, did he have money in that safe, cash? I believe so. All right, and did he have thousands and thousands of dollars, stacks of hundreds? Did you say that? I believe at one point in time. Did you say, quote, hundreds are like dollars to him? I did say that. Did you say that, quote, all of his money is like stapled together, the hundreds in bundles? I believe I did say that. She said that when she dated... Okay, that, that's really good evidence for the prosecution. Um, I don't know anyone that staples money together. And the person that did the killing got paid and the hundreds were stapled together. It's really good information, good evidence. Aided Charles, he would always keep his money stapled together. As for Katie, she maintained she took no part in the murder and that the large amount of money she was now receiving was because she was working as Charles Adelson's assistant. She then throws Charles under the bus, saying she believes he was involved in Dan's murder. In the end, the jury found... See what I mean? Everybody ends up spilling their gut. Everybody. Every time. The Garcia guilty of first-degree murder, but a mistrial was declared for Katie. Garcia was then sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
Finally, on April 21, 2022, Charles Adelson was arrested and charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and solicitation to commit murder. Wendy and Donna were also named co-conspirators but were not charged. Katie was then retried, and on May 20. Wait a minute, named co-conspirators and were not tried. I'm not sure why they would not have been tried. 7th, 2022, she was also found guilty of first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and solicitation to commit murder. Just like Garcia, she was given life in prison without the possibility of parole. Charles's trial began on October 26, 2023, and on November 6, just like Katie, he was found guilty of first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, and solicitation of murder. Seven days later, on November 13th, 73-year-old Donna Adelson was arrested at the Miami International Airport and charged with the same crimes, first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and solicitation of murder. Sadly, after the original arrest of Rivera and Garcia in 2016, Wendy no longer allowed Dan's parents to have contact with their grandsons. She also changed their last names from Markle to Adelson. Unfortunately, grandparents in Florida had no rights to visitations and were not even allowed to petition the court for it. In 2022, the Markle Act, which gives grandparents legal visitation rights, was signed into law by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. At this time, no trial date has been set for Donna. Charles, on the other hand, will be sentenced on December 12th. While Wendy has not been charged with any crimes, given the fact that they waited to arrest Donna after Charles was found guilty, it could only be a matter of time. And isn't it true that her parents, anytime they would want Wendy to come down with the boy? Okay, my personal opinion, I think Wendy knew something, but I'm not sure if it's enough to prosecute. That's my personal opinion of just watching this documentary. Boys, they would actually drive up to Tallahassee, pick her up, and drive her back down. That's what she reported. I want to be cautious because I know her to be a person that doesn't always tell me the truth, but that's what I was told, yes. Well, you just brought me into a whole new line of questioning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's talk about her ability to tell the truth. Okay. You know her very well. You were dating her for a long time. Well, a few months, seriously, okay. but go ahead. How would you describe her when it's, you know, trying to determine whether or not she's telling the truth? I found her to be a deeply deceitful person and not that great at it. That, that was my impression. Would she occasionally just put on a show, try to get people to feel sorry for her? Wendy adopted the victim role as her default social role, her way of getting attention, sympathy, etc. Yes. Did she play the victim role to you about how awful Danny, Danny was to her? Yes. And did she constantly complain about that? What a terrible person he was to her? <laughs> and Okay. The, the brother, I forgot his name. Was it Charlie that, that got charged with all this? They said he's going to be sentenced December the 12th. I am going to post this video probably December the 12th. So may know that day what he was actually sentenced to. If you like these type of videos, these reactions, me reacting to true crime, please subscribe to my channel and like my videos.